Hello and welcome to another one of my productivity training videos and today I'm finally getting around to making a getting started with Zapier video. Now Zapier and it is pronounced Zapier, not Zapier. Uh, the way you remember is it's Zapier makes you happier. And Zapier is a tool I've mentioned a lot in other videos, on my blog and in my podcast. And so yeah, I thought it was about time that I explain how to get started with Zapier, which is what I'm doing today. And I've planned to do at least a couple more videos on how I use Zapier and just a few other tips for getting started with the tool. Now, Zapier, if you haven't heard what this tool is about, it's basically an automation tool. So think of it as your digital developer, which you can use to link different internet services together. So you have different services, like maybe you've got a Google account, you've got a Twitter account, MailChimp, Pipedrive, Asana, Trello, Google Docs, all these different internet services that you use. And we can make Zapier connect these tools together so they can talk to each other. And it works based off a trigger and action system, which is very common if you've used other automation tools before. Now, one of the challenges with getting started with Zapier is that it's quite hard to know what you can even automate. You don't know what you don't know, so you don't even really know what's possible. So because it works off this trigger action system, you need to know kind of what triggers are available so that we can decide what actions do we want to perform. The best way to do that is create a free Zapier account to get started with. If you come to this apps tab at the top, you've then got all the different connected apps that work with with Zapier. So just type in the name of an app, or if you select one here, so let's go, let's go to Gmail, very common one. You come to the integration screen, and what I like to do is scroll down, and here you can see triggers, actions, and searches. So if you just, I would suggest for a new user, go to the, the apps that you use regularly, Gmail, MailChimp, whatever it is that you use, have a look at the triggers. So for example, something, a trigger that could trigger something from Google would be maybe a new email that you receive, or if you star an email, or if you apply a label to an email. These are all things that when you perform those actions, when that trigger happens, Zapier can see that, and it can see the information about that email, so you can then go and perform some kind of action. The actions are then available on the next tab. So we could say, right, when you receive an email, uh, add a label to it, create a label, send another email. And the great thing about Zapier is you don't have to do triggers and actions just within that one app. We could take a trigger from Gmail, like when a new label is added, and we could link that with another service altogether. So for example, adding that label in Gmail could be a trigger to then go and uh, add or update a subscriber or remove a subscriber or add a tag to a subscriber in MailChimp. Now I will briefly touch on Zapier's pricing because it's important to understand this when getting started. First of all, like I said, you can start for free. In fact, their free version has been made uh, even better in the last few months. It used to be even more restrictive. But with the free version, you can create up to 10 zaps. A zap basically is one automated workflow or sequence. So it's a trigger and then any number of actions. That's, that's a zap. So just like I said before, adding a label in Gmail, that could be a trigger which then gets uh, updates or adds a subscriber in MailChimp. That is one zap. So you can have 10 zaps on the free account. You can also perform 2,000 tasks. Now a task is basically an action. So with that same example, let's say we are you trigger when the uh, label is added to Gmail. The action is that action of adding it to MailChimp. That's actually just one action. The trigger does not count as a task. Now let's say before we add it to MailChimp, let's say we formatted the email or performed uh, an additional step, maybe we add it to a Google Sheet or something like that. That would then be an additional task, that would be two actions or two tasks. So your billing or the plan that you choose will depend on basically how much you use Zapier, which means when you get started, you can start for free, you can do a load, loads of things with it, and then you can pay to upgrade as and when you need to get more, uh, pay for more zaps and have more tasks because you're doing more with it. So I think it's a great way to get started with the tool and you only need to pay for it when you're actually using it a lot. So to show you how to create a really simple zap and, and how this actually works, let's just continue with that example and let's actually set that up now using Zapier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click make a zap at the top of the page. Um, I'm just gonna name my zap first of all and a, and a good best practice that I've used when naming my zaps just so that they are more meaningful and you kind of remember what they do. I always um, name it the trigger, a little arrow, and then the action. So I'll go um, subscribe label, uh, or we'll say Gmail label, little arrow, and then I go uh, subscribe in MailChimp. So it's kind of what's the trigger and then the action, just so I kind of know what this zap's about. In your zap settings, you can actually put some extra notes in to just kind of explain to yourself or remind yourself how it works or the way, you know, important um, bits of information that you might need to remember. 
uh, or just to explain to somebody else how it works. So keeping some comments here can be a good idea. So first thing we need to do is we need to set up our trigger. And to do that, we're gonna choose our app. So I'm gonna to go to, uh, I, I can search or I can actually just pick here. I'm gonna to go to Gmail. That's the app that I'm gonna use. And here you can see all of the available triggers that I have. So I'm gonna choose the new labeled email. That's the trigger that I want Zapier to look for. So we'll save and continue. Uh, I need to connect my account so I can do that now. So on this next page now, I'm going to choose the specific label that I want uh, Zapier to look for. So I'm gonna click this box now. It's gonna pull all the labels from my account. So it's actually going into my account now. It's looking at all the different labels that I have. So these are actually from my account. And here down here, I have one called subscribe. Now the options on this page are going to differ uh, completely for the different triggers and apps that you're using. So this one's very simple. It's just the, the trigger is when there's a new label added to an email. So I just have to pick that label. Depending on the app, depending on the trigger, there might be other options that you have to choose. So in a future video, when I show you some of my other apps, you'll see how uh, maybe if you want to let's say get Zapier to watch a project in Asana for a new task, we actually have to specify the account, the project, and um, how to find that task. This one's very straightforward though. So I'm just explaining that what you see on this screen will differ depending on the, the trigger that you're using. So here I'm just saying, look out for that subscribe label and let's click continue. Now what we need to do is get Zapier to pull in some test data. We need some actual information to work with so we can see what that test information looks like. So here it's found, uh, it's found a couple of tests and I can click this arrow, I can actually see what the what information Zapier has been able to pull in. So this is information from the email, this is like who's it, the subject line, the email recipient, all that kind of information is all in here. And now I can click continue. So that's my trigger set up. And Zapier will check that trigger every 15 minutes if you're on the free plan. So it, it can take up to 15 minutes for this particular Zap to run. If you go onto higher tier plans, it will check more frequently as well, but it can take up to 15 minutes for this to run. You do have some apps as well that are called instant Zaps. That means uh, it won't actually have to wait because that integration has um, integrated so that the trigger can actually trigger the Zap instantly, you don't have to wait. So Calendly is a good example of that. When somebody books a new appointment in Calendly, that will actually trigger Zapier straight away. So now with my trigger set up, I'm gonna add uh, a step. And there's a bunch of things I can do here. There's uh, the normal one that people use is add an action or a search, which is what I'm gonna do. But there are other things. You can actually set up filters. You can format data, which I'll be showing you in another video. Um, you can even create paths. So depending on different conditions, you can actually have Zapier perform one or, or multiple different things. And it can actually perform multiple actions and go down different paths. For now, to keep it simple, we're just gonna click new action. So we're gonna add that action step now, great. Again, we're gonna pick the app that we want to use. So I'm gonna pick MailChimp. And here are all the actions that I can perform. I am going to um, add a subscriber. I'm gonna connect my account. And next on this page, I, now I can set, um, set up the options for creating that new subscriber. So here's all the information that MailChimp needs to create a new subscriber. So it firstly needs to know what audience are we putting this person in. I can click this drop down and it will pull in information from my account and it shows me in this case the different audiences. So I'm gonna add this person to the Paul Miners newsletter. It also needs an email address. So again, I can uh, click this little, um, drop down on the right hand side. And here you can see all the different, all the information from that trigger step. This is all the information that Zapier received about that email. In this case, I can pick the person's email address and I can put that in here. There are other options like I can specify, do I want to enable double opt-in? If they're an existing subscriber, do I want to update them? Do I want to add them to a particular group? So you can see with this particular action, there's a few other choices and things that I can do um, along the way. I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna add this new subscriber. Click continue. And then finally, now we can send a test to MailChimp. So I'm gonna send the test. What it's actually gonna do is it's actually gonna take that email, it's gonna go and add it into MailChimp for me. And it says, yep, a test uh, was successfully sent. I can now go to MailChimp and confirm if that was actually the case. And then once I'm ready, I can click finish. I can add this to a particular folder if I wanna, if I have different folders for different apps. And then finally, I can turn it on. Actually, it says here, this um, will actually check Gmail every five minutes, not 15 minutes, like I said before. And so now that's up and running. Zapier will check Gmail for that label every five minutes. 
if it finds an email with that label, it'll go ahead and add it to MailChimp for me. So rather than having to do that manually myself, rather than having to get an assistant, virtual assistant or someone to do that, I've created my own little automation that just runs in the background. And uh, I, I have loads of different zaps running, performing all sorts of actions for me. I kind of begin to even work out how much time Zapier saves me. It is performing probably thousands of actions per day for me um, of all the different uh, things that I have going on. So uh, I can just say that it's very satisfying knowing that I have a tool like this operating in the background, automating all this stuff for me. So please let me know if you have any questions about Zapier. I highly recommend if you haven't already signing up for a free account and getting started and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Thank you very much for watching.